Hello, I'm Liam, and we are playing Four Against Darkness. It's been a week, so let's see if I can remember how to play. What are we doing? We are entering Torment's Rest, looking for an Anger Mace, guarded by uh, a gaunt troll, or in the possession of the troll. Um, we used Twisted Dungeons to determine that this place has an abundance of mana. This dungeon was built in an area overflowing with magical energies. This makes life uh, much easier for wizards. And we don't have a wizard, so this is, this is all about Blesk, our elf. All spell casters gain one additional life point. So I've indicated that here with uh, a dotted health uh, box. Uh, represents their increased awareness and the power surging through their veins. In addition, every time a spell is cast, the caster has a 3 and 6 chance of retaining it. Um, on a roll of 6, the caster suffers 1 life damage. So there's, a, there's an upside and a downside to this mana abundance maybe maybe this place was constructed by a, a wizard who was tortured by knowledge he'd learned that perhaps no man should and he sought to contain his fear and anger here and try to find some solace in torment's rest i like the uh i like the lair raid rules for what we're doing i'm intrigued by this monster hunt but i feel like we'd it would go pretty long um, for a, for something we're recording for YouTube. So we'll stick with the lair raid rules. Fits with our story, too, with the Divigna Marcia's giving us information about this place and sending us here. So our party has found reliable information about the lair of a boss monster. Um, we've determined its identity. You have to go through D6 plus four tiles before finding its lair. So that's going to be 1 plus 4 is 5. It's even fewer than last time, I think. So 5 tiles to lair. Uh, the boss's treasure will be in its lair, but you might encounter the boss before that. In that case, the boss has been warned as, and is preparing a welcome party for the heroes. So he surprises us and there's a trap. We'll uh, dig into those rules if and when that happens. Um, I think that's all we need in terms of setup. Let's, uh, let's begin our adventure. I'm going to hide this and we'll roll our first rune. Oh boy, it's going to look like this. We'll start in the middle here. We've got a door right off the bat. Um, we'll assume that that's not locked or that we just successfully bash it down. Uh, I guess we could roll. See if we get a wandering monster right at the start. Got another door here. Uh, this is an unusually complicated um, entrance room. I don't think I've seen this one before. Down. Oops, I didn't do that right. This is up three. Oh well. Mm, we'll call that a serendipitous error. That okay. Should we see if this door is locked? Yeah, why not? Put this over here on a one or a two. The door is locked. It is not. So we enter the entrance here. Um, let's see if these other doors. Where's my pencil? Let's see if these other doors are locked before we we'll probably head up this corridor. The western door is not locked. The eastern door is with a sturdiness. Of three, I rolled a two, but the minimum sturdiness is three, so that door's locked. We'll have to bash it in. We don't have a rogue who can pick it, but um, let's head up straight up the middle. So our first room is gonna be five, six, fifty-six. So 
So here we are. It's a big one. Uh, that's gonna curtail what this room can be. So I'm gonna bring it up one more just so we can fit something in here. And we'll bring this over two, up three, over two, up two, over three, and across and down. Got a door in the middle up here, and a door right here, and a door in the middle on the west wall. So, first, see if this door is locked. It is not. We head into the room. Call this room one is the entrance to room two. First, on a one and six, it's the boss lair. It is not. So, uh, where's our contents table? I'll pull this up and we'll go to. Here we go. Room five. Empty. Roll D6 on the special features table. Let's close that. Special features. Three is an armory. All characters can change their weapons if they want within the le limits of the weapons allowed. Uh, I don't know that we need. We're pretty happy with the weapons we have. Armory. Um, uh, and then what else can we do here? Can we search it? What did we roll? A four? No, we roll a special feature. And we can search it. All right, we rolled a five. Is that what we rolled? Special feature, armory, yeah. Um, can search it. Okay. I'm already forgetting. It looked like maybe we rolled an events table, but we're just going to keep going. Um, we can search it. And I like to search rooms. I don't really care to search hallways, but let's search a room. Uh, mine is, let's see, on a 1 to 6. We got a 1, and it tells us wandering monsters attack. So we'll go to fiendish foes. And what do we get? 6. 2d3 plus 1 goat men. So roll that. This is a 1, and this is a 3, so that's 4 plus 1 goat men. That's 5 goat men. 5 goat men. Wandering monsters will have no treasure. Um, and in a, a corridor, they would attack the rear. I think in a room, they'll just attack everybody. Um, goat men. Level 6. There's five of them. Uh, normal treasure, they won't have treasure. Um, Goatmen fanatically charge into battle. Treat them as level eight in the first round of combat. So, let's see. Um, who will they attack? Everybody's going to get attacked once. Throck will get attacked twice. So he needs to make two defense rolls against a level eight creature. One of them is an automatic failure. His defense is one, so he gets hit by both of these. Goatman Throck takes two damage right off the bat. Okay, now we'll do Elric. Also fails. He takes a point of damage. One is an automatic failure. Lesk, two. Her defense is plus one, not enough. She takes a point of damage. And finally, Jim, five, plus two, seven defense, not enough, because they're treated as level eight, so he takes a point of damage. Everybody, this is a rough dungeon uh, here at the beginning. That's our five goat men, they attack, it's our turn. Okay. Uh, Throck with his two-handed hammer. Oh, that's an automatic failure. Uh, masterwork or no. Elric, six. That explodes. Nine plus his attack is two. That's 11. So he takes out two of these. 
Um, Goatman with one hammer attack. We've got three left. Um, okay. Blesk. One. She fails. Tim. Two. Oh, he rolls with advantage because of his enchanted sword. Three plus four is seven. That hits. So we're down to one goat man. Actually, we should have rolled right away. Uh, as soon as we killed three of those fellas. We'll roll and see. That's a one. Do they get... This is their morale check. Um, yep, so they flee. This final goat man runs away. Um, fled. No treasure, again, since they're wandering. Let's see. Let's head west. See if that door is locked. It is not. And what do we have? Behind the door, 52. Okay, I've got a hallway, got another room, so we'll have to roll and see if this is the boss's lair. We've got a short hallway, a little room here, three by three room, with exits to the north and the south. No door on the south, doors on the west. And the north. It's room three. Is it the boss's lair? It is not. But what is it? Um, eight. Oops. On our core rules. A room. Minions. Okay. Fiendish foes. Minions table. This is going to be... We're carrying over the six minions from previously, so we're up to seven encounters with minions. When we get to ten, we get to make an XP roll. But let's see what is here. Four. We've got 2d3 plus four gnolls. So that's one and three is four plus four, eight gnolls. Eight gnolls. Level six. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. I realized I was making a mistake previously. Um, I was rolling for morale when we killed half of them, but we have to defeat more than half uh, before we do a morale check. So we have to defeat five of these eight before we, before the three will consider fleeing. Uh, level six, normal treasure morale plus one. Knolls fighting against a wounded character, which is everyone. Uh, will become frenzied. In this case, treat them as one level higher when you are defending. So we can hit them at level 6, but to defend, we have to defend against level 7. Just write that down. Attack. Defend. Anything else we need to know? Uh, we could roll to see if we bribe them, if, they, if they'll accept a bribe, but we're not actually carrying any money, so... Uh, it's on. So, let's see. Move this to the side. We'll hide this for now. And here we go. Throck. Um, three. Plus four is seven. He hits one. Kills one. Elric. Mm, fails. Jim. Uh, I'm debating, well... Debating whether Blesk should use a sleep spell this early on. She's got a sleep spell memorized. She has a wand of sleep charge, a scroll. I don't know. I'm really concerned. Let's wait until we're in more trouble. So Blesk is just going to swing with her silvered sword. Oh, she explodes. Six. Twelve. Eighteen. Uh, Nineteen plus um, four is 23. Uh, that's almost four. That's three. She takes out three gnolls with a, some kind of whirling multi-attack with her silvered sword. That's fantastic. Is Jim impressed? He has six. Jim explodes. Uh, inspired by Blesk's amazing display, he does 
8 plus 4 is 12 damage. He takes out two of these gnolls. They need to do a morale check. I would. Two. They get a plus one morale, but that's not enough. The remaining two flee. Okay. And let's see. Knoll's normal treasure. The fiendish foe's treasure table is here. Uh, we'll roll a d6. Four. One gem worth 2d6 times 10 gold pieces. Six times 10 is 60. They've got a gem. 60 gold piece gem. Okay. That's room three. Um, we will check these doors to see if they're locked. We forgot to check that door. We'll deal with it. Maybe we'll just, uh, we'll just head south. Let's not worry about the doors right now. So what do we have to the south? 41. That is going to be another room. So we will check to see if this thing is a... Um, looking at how I might connect it to this space over here. Uh, that's going to be a challenge. We do have a door here. So we do need to check that door, I suppose. We'll come down three. And there's a room indi or door indicated here, but that's going to take us off the map. So I'm just going to end this like this. This is a strange little space. Uh, we'll deal with that later. This is going to be room four. Is it the boss's lair? It is not. Room four. What is it? Go to our core rules. 2d12. Or, yeah, 2d6. Four. Room, it's a special event. Okay. Special events table. Roll a six-sided die. Oops, I just dropped a die. Three. A lady in white. Aha, uh -huh. we have encountered her before. Lady in white. A lady in white appears and asks you, oh, let me show this here for you. A lady, a lady in white appears and asks you, I'm getting there, hang with me here. You highlighted. A lady in, there we go. A lady in white appears and asks you to complete a quest. If you accept, roll on the quest table. If you refuse, she disappears. Um, ignore any further appearances. Yeah, let's do it. Quest. Quest table. Okay. One. Bring me his head. The creature asks the party to kill a boss monster. Roll on the boss table to determine who. The next time the party meets a boss in a room, instead of rolling it up, you may use the boss from the quest. Killing the boss and bringing its head to the creature's room completes the quest. Okay. Um, roll on the boss table to determine who. We'll use the core rules boss table. D6. One. It's a mummy. Kill... Bring, uh, bring the mummy's head. Okay, room four. So we'll find the mummy somewhere in here, and we'll bring the head back here. In the meantime, let's backtrack. So we go back to room three, and we roll a six. So it's, and there's no wandering monster here. Let's check to the west. Is that door locked? It is, with the sturdiness of three. Let's see if uh, the north door is locked. It is not. So let's head north. Uh, 34. What do we have for 34? An oval-shaped room. Hide this. 34. We're heading north, and the room's going to look like so. 
oval shaped rim. Like that. The corridor leading north. One, two, three, four. This is our fifth tile. The next room we find will be the boss. Let me check the layer rules. It's the next room. You have to go through tiles, these number of tiles, before finding a slayer. So yeah. So we'll see what's in this fifth room. I get, we'll roll to see if this is uh, the boss. Nope. We do not encounter the boss here. But what is here? Five. Back to the core rules. Uh, flow chart. Five special features, and then we can search it if we like. Special features. We'll roll a one, a fountain. All wounded characters recover one life the first time they encounter a fountain in an adventure. Further fountains have no effect. That is very nice. We'll say this fountain is depleted. And everybody regains one life. So, Jim, Blesk, and Elric are no longer wounded. And Throck has one wound. And that is room five. Okay, our next room. Five tiles. I guess the next, if we head north here, the door is locked. The sturdiness is six. So Throck, see if Throck can bash this door in, and this is going to be the boss's lair. This is going to be our gaunt troll. So, um, Throck needs to, uh, he rolls a 2, plus his level is 3, that's a 5. He fails to bash in the door. Let's see if Jim can bash the door in. Jim <laughs> rolls a wandering monster. Okay. What do we have for Wandering Monster? Roll. We roll the six. We roll on the boss table. Okay. The next time we encounter a boss, I think it said, um, see if it's the mummy. Or we can just say it's the mummy. Let's go back to that quest. The next time the player meets a boss in a room, we are in a room, and so we meet a boss, and so this is the mummy that the lady in white wants. So wandering mummy. We'll call this uh, boss. We'll get an XP roll if we defeat this. I'm going to mark that here. XP mummy. <clears throat> well, we need to kill this thing and take its head. Where is the mummy? Mummy. Level 5. Undead. Level 5, undead. So Elric will get a bonus to attack because it's undead. It's got 4 life points. 2 attacks. Treasure plus 2, but it's wandering, so we don't get its treasure. Any character killed by a mummy... Oops, I'm not showing this, am I? There we go. Any character killed by a mummy... What just happened? There we go. Becomes another mummy. <laughs> it must be fought by the party. Uh, mummies are attacked at plus two by the fireball spell, which we do not have. Mummies never test morale. Reactions always fight. All right. It attacks first because it's wandering. Four, it's going to attack Jim. Um... So Jim needs to defend against level 5. He rolls a 2 plus 2 is 4. And that's not enough. Jim gets hit by the mummy. Okay. Our turn. Throck. With his masterwork two-handed, it explodes. 6. 7 plus his attack is 11. That's 2 points of damage to the mummy. With his masterwork two-handed hammer... Let's uh, let's let Jim go because he got it. Well, we'll just keep going in order so I don't get confused. Uh, Elric, Elric's gonna attack. He gets uh, plus four. 
plus plus his level, which is four against undead. Yeah, three plus four is seven. That hits. The mummy takes a point of damage. It never tests morale, right? Mummy, mummies never test morale. So now Blesk rolls a three plus her attack is a four. That's a seven, and that's it. So they take out this mummy easily. The mummy, and they take its head. We're here in five. We need to go back to four to turn it into the lady in white. So, but first, let's make an XP roll. Elric and Blesk are level four. Throck is level three, and Jim is level three. Let's level up. Um, let's see if we can level up Throck. So he needs to roll a four or better, and he does not. So. We'll mark that we made that roll and failed. Okay, we have a choice. Do we, well, it said we can try to bash. The rules for bashing doors is that if we fail, we can try again later. So let's go back. We'll turn in this, um, we'll turn in this mummy's head and see what the lady in white gives us. Uh, so we need to cut through this door. No wandering monsters in room three. Uh, we don't need to roll for Wandering Monsters in 4, because that's the Lady in White. So, back to the... How do we resolve? Lady in White, if you accept, roll on the quest table. If you refuse, so what's our reward? I believe there is a... Do we do the Epic Rewards? Yeah, I think we do the Epic Rewards table here for turning in this quest. Uh, four. Shield of Warning. One of the party's shields is now enchanted and counts as protection even if the user is surprised by wandering monsters or if the party is fleeing from combat. If the party has no shields, they will be given one. Shield of Warning is permanent. Very nice. And will last throughout a campaign. We sold for 200 gold pieces. So... I think our only shield carrier is Elric. So Nihina has a shield of warning. Now enchanted counts as protection even if the user is surprised or if fleeing. So I'll just make a note of this. Of warning. Excellent. Okay. All right, thank you, Lady in White. I think that's all we get for doing that quest. Um, let's head back north, see if we encounter any wandering monsters, and then we'll try to crash that door in again. Okay, no wandering monsters in five, in three, no wandering monsters in five. We'll try to bash this door again. I believe it was sturdiness six. I neglected to write it down. Uh, so here we go. Throck, five, easily bashes the door in this time. This is going to be a room shape, and this is going to be our gaunt troll. So let's see what we roll up here. Six. Sixty-six. Okay. I'm going to actually flip this room so that it fits better. And we won't draw that top door. Um, this goes up one and over two, up one, over two more, got a door over here, and like that, six, six, uh, and just note that we got a shield of warning. For our records here for turning that in. And in room six, we will take on the Gaunt Troll. Okay. I think we'll stop here for this episode. Uh, we will play again soon. And until then, friends, keep your lanterns lit and your hearts warm. Thanks for watching.